Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to my video log here. Now this is going to be a short video and it's basically just to say that uh, having this connected has all been well and good. But what I noticed was when I connected up using this circuit, one of the 60 watts into 8 ohms, 100 watts into 4 ohms circuits, uh, I got a lot of bang crackle moving around the input connectors, which I shouldn't have been doing while it was on. And what it ended up doing was popping out one of the uh, drivers, um, uh, transistors here, and that in turn shorted uh, the other transistor. And when that happened, unfortunately, because I didn't notice it straight away, uh, one, it blew up, well, it didn't blow up, but it made this, the capacitor here is one of these, it made it puff up. I thought I had it here for a second, but I may have uh, thrown it now. Never mind, I oh, know it isn't. Here it is. Uh, made it puff up. I don't know if you can see the way the top of that is swollen up there. And there's a 220 ohm resistor supposed to come off the, uh, the base of this and go to ground. And it also killed that, turned it into dust pretty much. But the worst thing is, this is dead easy for me to you know fix up again, not a problem. The worst thing that it did was one of my speakers and i'll show you it's down here speaker there and the other this pair is at the back there but what it did was it actually killed off this cone it's not smell -o vision so i can't uh, let you smell it but it does smell all burnt out and connected so i gotta get a another one of these in order for me to be able to uh, fix that unit and so what did I learn from it? Well, I learned, um, I learned that I've got to be careful, especially when things are plugged in and going. And this is pretty high gain. I mean, you can get 15 volts out of this thing. Um, so it's pretty high gain. And that with duff connections, you know, crackling connections, isn't any good for, these are not the genuine you know, these are just bought off eBay, so, you know, what I found with some of the eBay stuff is, like, with the LM1875s, the genuine LM1875s got short circuit protection, stuff like that. The eBay ones don't, uh, maybe because that's the patented, I don't know. But what I've decided to do is employ some bits of kit like this. Now, this is a speaker protector. And unlike some of the other speaker protectors that I was looking at, which is quite a few, uh, this one doesn't require its own voltage. So it works on its own. And it basically goes, these are the threshold voltages. So if DC were to come through this, what it does is it looks out for DC. And this capacitor will charge up in a, when there's a DC state going on. And that will cause these two transistors to act like a DIAC, which in turn will turn on the triac. And <laughs> sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And that will then short out the connection of the speakers. Um, let me just put that around the right way around. You see, this is, uh, I'm not going to take credit for this or anything. This is Brian Powell Audio. You can buy these online. Um, I'm not going to say you've got to buy them or anything like that. But I'm just saying that uh, because I play around with this stuff, I'm glad I've picked up two of these. There's another one in the left and right channel, of course. It doesn't need its own independent power supply. And it should, by rights, hopefully in most fault conditions, uh, use this triac to basically short my speakers so they don't have a circuit running through them, which is what happened um, in the instance that we're talking about here. And uh, that will carry on until the voltage drops below one volt or that this little glass 5 amp fuse blows. Now, it's a pretty good setup from what I can tell, and it should not make any difference whatsoever to the sound going to the speakers, because uh, this is a very low uh, milliohm uh, situation. But this is what I'm gonna do now in order to, to rectify that. I'm still waiting to try and see if I can get a cone. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm one of the types of people. I had to replace my speakers, so I bought myself some of those. Uh, they're monitor audio, they're not very expensive really, I've got them in a bit of a sale. And, um, and yeah, they're alright, they give me a much better bass. I mean, if you, if you know the standard bass guitar is 41 hertz on its lowest note, so um, the speakers that I'm, the speakers that are there now, 
they go down to 35 hertz. So I've been listening to some lovely, uh, some lovely audio there. But yes, yeah, so that's it. Just a real short video about that. Um, bit of a boo boo there, and I'll get myself back into gear over the next um, few days, getting more videos put together. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. If you worry about your speakers, or you've had them pop out before, these are not particularly that expensive. Um, but I've got a funny feeling they are going to be a very um, a, a very practical and worthwhile addition to my little setup here if I'm going to be playing around with stuff like this. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.